Hi, um, my name is Elle Fanning. Um, I'm here this morning to get into my everyday look. Oh, well, my name's Trixie Mattel, and I wanted to show you guys an easy look, well, easy for me, difficult for you. So I have extremely dry skin, which is not a good match for drag um, because I tear through my face on a daily basis. So um, I gotta take care of my skin like big time. Otherwise I literally will be in drag and have like flakes on my face. So I'm gonna use nine to five cleanser from Lush because it's a waterless like cleansing lotion. You apply it right on dry skin. It feels like, I don't know, to me, I only have so many hot water splashes on my face until I feel like I'm actually starting to deplete my natural lipid barrier. I went to beauty school, so. So then once I've kind of washed that in, and then I'll wipe it off. The devil's in the details. So like, if you're gonna wear as much makeup as I wear, I do want people to get close and be like, oh my God, that looks really good up close even. People always tell me I look better in real life than I do in pictures, which is supposed to be a compliment, but I'm always like, well, what kind of trash bag do I look like in pictures? This is a uh, Mac, I've been using this charged water, but this is really good because it has, um, it's one of the only Mac moisturizers that doesn't have any fragrances. And again, because I'm so dry, even the teeniest fragrance will burn my face. This is a lip oil. I don't know if it's that great, but my ex-boyfriend gave it to me. We have a lot of trust. A little Scandinavia spray. This is the post makeup spray. Uh, it's supposed to be for recovery, but your, my skin is so dry and wrecked all the time that I do this. Whew. So now we can put makeup on. Okay, I'm gonna glue my eyebrows down, which, you know, this is New York. People do that all the time. So what you gotta do is this is a normal glue stick that you used in like kindergarten. And they go like against the grain of my eyebrows. And I'm really fortunate because I have, definitely have eyebrows, but they're not the fullest. So if you're a gentleman who has fuller brows, it's probably harder for you. You can really reset the entire like architecture of this part of your face. And especially in pictures, if your eye is this big, I think it makes people go like, oh, her head must be really little. It's not. For me, for better or for worse, it's very apparent that no one ever taught me how to do anything. <laughs> Cause I kind of just like do my own version of everything. And then I worked um, for different makeup um, companies. Um, like I worked in a Sephora, I worked at an Ulta, and then I worked for Mac. I would literally be, you know, at the mall doing people's makeup all day. And then I would be like <laughs> closing the register at night, counting money with one hand and glue my eyebrows down with the other hand. Cause I just have to race straight to the club to get in drag. It was like my dirty little secret that I did drag. Cause I didn't want these like Midwestern white ladies to find out that they would think that I was going to make them look like a drag queen. So then I'm gonna take this little brush. This is one of those like baby hair, I don't know. They sell them at beauty stores for like 99 cents. They're supposed to be for your baby hairs, but I just get ready here and brush it up. You can see when it's purple that it's still gummy and when it's not purple, it's dry. Then I take my little washcloth from earlier and you notice there's like so much glue. So I use this to go around the perimeter of my brow to wipe off all the extra. And because it's water soluble, it just comes right off. Get right in here. So you do have to do like several layers. Um, so I'll do a layer and then I'll just wait. Oh yeah, so then I um, auditioned for Drag Race because I was working for a makeup company at the time, full time, and I was like, full stop. And I don't want to say what company it was because it was MAC Cosmetics, but I got fired and then I was like devastated. So then I had all this extra free time on my hands and I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna audition for Drag Race. I don't have anything else to do. So if I had not been fired, I would have never auditioned for Drag Race. I wouldn't even be right here right now. So while this is drying, I'm gonna put some primer on my face. This is uh, Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. So then I gotta do this. I gotta take a brush and fish it out of here like some kind of goddamn criminal. You know, you don't teach this in beauty school. I can take a mental picture now of my face. I don't like the makeup to look too much like a mask. This is really the things I do when I get ready, so. Okay. So I gotta seal these brows. So you can see they're kind of wet because they're still kind of purple. So I'm gonna go in with, this is Studio Fix powder. I travel with like five of these, but this is like something similar to my skin tone, but a little darker. And I'm gonna go in there and start pressing this down. And look how that bitch is disappearing the hardest and long, it's like the, the hardest thing you get good at is covering your brows. Like all the new baby drag queens will have like oatmeal brows, we call them. But even before I've done foundation, like look, that's disappearing. We're gonna start going in with some foundation. So the Trixie makeup has so many different colors. I mean, I travel with like four different foundations, five different powders. 
but I'm using uh, the TV paint stick. This is a lot of what dry queens use. This is NB1. I'm gonna start patting some of this over the brows because we need some serious coverage. And then I'm using, a lot of people are shocked that I wear liquid foundation, but I do. And I'll start going around the eye. Because with this, how much makeup I wear, I have to do my eyes first. Like a real person would use an eyeshadow primer. I sort of use liquid foundation as an eye primer because my eye is gonna be like this big. Today I'm using this uh, Too Faced Just Peachy Matte Palette. I mean, I could do my entire face with this. I'm just gonna get in here and start. Ooh. So I try to do this while the foundation's wet so that I can get it to stick because I get a little more of a, like an impact with that. So now I'm just going with these darker colors and I'm sort of adding it around the eye. I mean, I really am just drawing like big dark circles around my eyes. Eyebrows. It looks pretty good. And I use a few different browns from here to do the brows because you don't want all just one brown, it looks nuts. My brows are never even. One time Kim Chi was like, Trixie, you look really pretty when your eyebrows are even. Thank you, Kim, that's really sweet. And because I've been doing a lot of 60s stuff, I have been doing a lot of like, um, Nancy Sinatra is a big one. She follows me on Instagram. By the time this comes out, she might change her mind, but. So now I got some more of my TV paint sticks and I'm just gonna go and I have to start cleaning up around my brows. So I got this little concealer brush, 001. I used to use TV white, which is like the off white, but 001 is more yellow and I think that looks better on my skin because of how much pink I wear on my face usually. I think pink skin is not a good choice. Okay, so that, I mean, you can tell it's not really much, but once we start to do this, we start to really see some shape. So I'm just softening up around the edges. I'm gonna take some more of my Studio Fix fluid and start doing a full layer here. So this is my TV white paint stick. I'm gonna start doing my shapes. And that's kind of like where we operate. Ooh, mistake. And this giant sponge and start doing this stuff. We have all this shadow, right? And we have all this crane and we have this hard line. So what are we gonna do with it? Quit? No. And I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna use just the tip to bounce along the perimeter of it. And that starts to marry it without moving it too much. <laughs> I mean, people have told me that my nose is a white worm swimming in chocolate pudding and I don't think they're wrong. So that's most of the highlight. So now we can go in and start doing um, the contours. It's like in makeup school and stuff. They're like, for every highlight, you have to have, ooh, you have, to have a shadow. I think Sharon Needle says, Dry Queens, we just draw brown circles around all of our features and we think that people think we look like a woman. So this is how I'm gonna marry this. The side of this sponge, you can tell there's like a, one kind of brown side that I use. See how fast I burn that out, oh my God. The highlight is, I mean, when you look at the Trixie makeup, you see the contour, but honestly the highlight, as you can see, is the part that really makes it like three dimensional. So I can see this one is higher than this one. So you can just go in there and kind of reassign the geometry of that. I don't know about you guys, when I'm watching people do their makeup, I'm, at, I'm like, I think I'm like dirty talking myself. Like I'm watching someone do makeup, I'm like, oh yeah, get in there. All right, so to finish this off, we gotta take, I'm gonna take this little contour palette again. I don't know, this is like 38 bucks, but I've had this for literally two years. So I really have to be artisanal. All right. So I'm powdering this, okay, Tupperware container from Ikea. I put like four different powders in here because maybe I want the coverage of one, but I want the whatever of the other. This is, I think this is Ben Nye Fair mixed with Airspun Cody powder, that like grandma powder. But because we have so much makeup on, I have to really powder the shit out of this. So this, this one's mostly translucent, but it has a little bit of coverage. So to be honest, it kind of just helps give everything a common relationship because it all has the same powder in it. And then I'm getting rid of all this makeup. But do you see how it makes everything like married? So this is an N9, it's like a really deep, deep brown. So I'm gonna do for my forehead. 
on the perimeter of my face, my jaw. I'm gonna go back in this little eye palette and borrow some of this. And get it really close and just add some depth there. Cause once you add that, look how like, whew, I mean, that is such a fake shape, but if you do it right, I mean, your eye just believes it, that that's my face, you know. Work. I've been using pretty much the same white eyeliner for a very long time. This is the NYX white gel liner. Bitch, this is $5. So I'm gonna get right in here. And it's, I mean, look how opaque that is. You guys know how hard it is to get a white product that is like full coverage. Look at that. One swipe. So we gotta do that part of the eye because that's sort of the tricksy part that everybody remembers. And then same brush, we're gonna clean right under the brow with it. It makes the darker spots look darker, it makes everything look cleaner. There's definitely things watching myself on TV that you learn the hard way. You're like, oh, that does not look like I thought it looked. Hey, I almost forgot my eyelid. So we're gonna be drawing on an eyelid here. Peach butter color. I also don't want my eyelid to be as white as this. You know, I want it to seem like it's a skin color versus like a shocking white eyeliner. So this is all gonna start to make sense once I get eyeliner on. I mean, you guys could imagine how much eyeliner I go through if you watch me do this. That's pretty much the shape we're going for. Do you see the difference? It's a huge difference. Everything's so deliberate and we're not using any of my real features. So I, right now I have like a, you know, this eyeliner and this shadow and I'm trying to like use the black eyeshadow. I don't want to see a line. So I'm just sort of buffing it so that I get sort of a, a disappearance there. This applicator is all these little teeth and I wear so much makeup that my lashes are covered in like powder and foundation, so I need to go in and paint them completely black. Oh, I hate when people wear lashes and no mascara. Go home, don't even go out. So I got these individuals. I like lashes with a clear band because I wanna see the lash, I don't wanna see the band. I don't wanna see a plastic backbone of a lash. I think that looks shitty. Woo! The most like hissy fits I've ever thrown publicly are because my eyes will start watering and the lashes will start to pop off. And then it's like, I'm trying to do comedy or whatever and I can feel them peeling and I just like cannot handle it. I remember I was on the set for my music video for Break Your Heart. My boyfriend was like, you need to calm down. Woo. For me, the lips are like a whole drama. Like I literally wear like five different lip pencils. So we're about to go down that trip together. Cool, do you see how that, now it's like warmer, it's starting to turn into a real thing. So Stacy could be a fun option, like a hot pink, but I wanna do, I really wanna try this nude, so. I'm gonna do some Jeffree Star Drug Lord. I really wanna try this. Oh my God. Huh. Oh yeah, and because we did that white underneath, you do get more of a, like there's more of a dimension in the middle. Oh my God. Oh, shivering white. Oh my God, if you're anybody who's like a makeup person, you want to do any sort of like special effects, a flat white, this is basically a giant white eyeshadow. And I'm using it right under my eye on this side. And look at the difference from like this side to this side. Like it, it, you almost can't really tell that it's white, but it makes the lashes look blacker, if that makes sense. It's like, what a difference. So I'm gonna pop open this little Thirsty palette from Jeffree. So um, I like sometimes, if an eyeshadow palette has colors in it that I can use as blush, I'm happy because I don't have to pack blush. Okay, this is my favorite part of every makeup. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Everybody should wear blush. I don't care who you are. I actually love on men, I love the look of, um, there's a few guys in LA who'll do like, they kind of wear Western looks and then they do clean skin with like blush and they look like howdy doody and I don't know, I just think it's so cool. Listen, I don't know if setting sprays are real, but I use them anyway because I get them sent to me for free. 
I'm just going to finish it off with some highlighter. This is about a 45 year old uh, highlighter called Whisper of Guilt that I'm sure they don't even make anymore. Do you guys like wigs? Most people, I think most people's favorite thing about drag is wigs. I think most drag queens, they want to put on the wig. Now the great thing about not having hair is I don't have to do anything. I can just literally place it, move on with my life. What I'll do is put the wig on and then take like a mental picture of like where that is and then I'll take it off. So I can go in and remove like all of this. So then this is a little spirit gum. I'm gonna just paint the perimeter. Because if you're putting this adhesive over makeup, the adhesive's gonna mix with the makeup and then you're basically gluing makeup pigment to your wig, which is not the look, sis. Get up in here and place it. Hello. So I'm doing this white thing today. Super cool. So I'm putting some foundation on my hands because I have a, uh, I mean, that just like doesn't match my face. See it much better. Woo! I like doing my own nails because I think it's a very like zen experience. This is some real shit. I used to get in full drag and then put my fake nails on and then paint them because apparently I wanted to feel this is Impulse Burnt Marshmallow and Leather Jacket. People was, um, started giving this to me as a gift. I was like, why would anyone want to smell like a leather jacket? But I'm telling you, it is so weird smelling, but in a good way. So I'm not really into necklaces, um, but I love earrings. Look at these big, weird, like half moon shapes. Aren't those cool? Do you think this hair makes me look like Falcor from The Never Ending Story? The Never Ending Story. All right, this is the look. Thank you for watching. My name is Trixie Mattel and um, see you soon. Goodbye.